Hey everyone, welcome back to Coffee Time. So have you struggled in the past what to do to get that first data science project started? Where to get your data? What models to build? How to write a professional research paper? In this video, we're going to dive into what are the steps required to get your first data science project started, to do your machine learning model, AI model, and to eventually write a research paper that can get you past your peer review. With that being said, let's dive right in. Welcome to this presentation of the project guidelines for data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So in this guideline and presentation, we're going to be walking you guys through a couple of the building blocks and milestones to conduct your independent research program. My name is Yi Chao Ying, and I'm excited to share everything with you. First things first, here is the content for today's presentation. We're going to start with AI research milestone. We're going to do a step-by-step -step breakdown, and then we're going to talk about the tech platforms as well as database management. So first things first is the AI research milestone. On a high level, there are five milestones. First step is about topic selection. You want to make sure you ask an interesting question, and a question can be a research question. On top of that, you want to make sure that this is something that you're truly passionate about, that you find it interested in. The second step is the experiment design. Based on the research question, maybe there are questions about data set collection, maybe there are questions about exploring data set analysis, maybe there are questions about exploring the particular machine learning methodology. Experiment design is crucial because it laid the groundwork of what to do for the rest of the project. Next, we have conducting the experiment. This is what I would say most of the heavy lifting happens in this program. And as a third milestone, as well as the milestone that consumes most of the percentile of the project, this is extremely crucial because this is the place where you actually develop the code in Python or whatever other language that you like, and to actually come up with a product in machine learning. So this involves data processing, build machine learning model, things like that. Next, we have paper writing. Depending on the research proposal, as well as the nature of the research project, the paper can be very different. It also depends on what conference you want to go for or what journal you want to go for. The template of research paper can, of course, change. So step four is to help you address what that objective is and to show you how to write an academic paper. And if you have step four nailed down, you should be ready to go for publication and finish the program. The last step is the publication. There are teams and managers to help you to navigate the journal selection, as well as how to make a submission. Depending on where you go for submission, there could also be a poster session or some sort of presentation. All that can be defined based on what kind of paper, what kind of research that you're going for. So now that we understand the milestone on a high level, let's dive into each particular step and break them down. First, topic selection. Topic selection has three elements. The first element is it really needs to have some sort of real world impact. It needs to be helpful for the world in some scenario. It needs to achieve certain standards. And obviously, it needs to show impact. Element two states that the research topic needs to have certain skill sets behind it. It cannot be as simple as playing around with the Excel spreadsheet. That won't be so much of a data science or machine learning research, right? So element two states that there are certain technical skills involved. Maybe it's building some sort of machine learning model or AI models, things like that. And the last element states that the research needs to be achievable. Depending on the timeline and due date and your personal schedule, there's no program out there that can last forever. Every program has a deadline, and it is up to you to make sure that deadline is up to your own schedule, and you are comfortable with delivering that deadline. If you can nail down these three elements, I will say that the first milestone topic selection can be completed. The second milestone is about experiment design. In the experiment design, we are really talking about this data-centric AI cycle presented on this slide. 
This is actually presented by Andrew N, a Stanford professor and a very famous AI influencer that started the deep learning website. So all credits goes to data-centric AI website, and that's the source provided by Andrew N. We start with data collection. And once we collect the raw data, we want to process it in a way that allow you to do your machine learning model. For example, if it's a supervised learning, then in this data set, you want to understand what is the feature that the machine learning model can learn and what is the outcome that you want the model to produce. Once those variables are defined, you then go into this mini cycle to build a model, train the model, evaluate the model, and come back to do the hyperparameter tune. And then you train again, evaluate again, and so on and so forth. This mini cycle might last a while and might be fast. It really depends on the nature of the project. And then in the end, once you're happy with the result, uh, you will deploy the model in production, uh, stand up some sort of API to allow user to interact with it. Now, depending on the user profile and how you define your stakeholder, in the beginning, this could be as simple as using your instructor or mentor as a stakeholder. On top of that, you can very well use your family friends to check out the API that you developed and give you a couple of recommendations. And those recommendations can actually come back to reinforce your understanding of your data. Is it a question about data collection or is there any improvement that you can do for data pre-processing? And if there's something that needs to be done, then you can always use this evaluation metric to come back to update your data pre-processing or data collection process and reinitiate the cycle again, and so on and so forth. And you'll be able to make progress from there. Based on my personal experience, there's this mini cycle in the middle and there's a macro cycle overall. The mini cycle, you want to go through as many times as you can just to get your hands dirty to understand how this ML model work and how the results are impacted based on the data that you selected. The macro cycle, depending on your deployment and the definition of your stakeholder. That, of course, depending on the nature of the project, and not every project has a well-defined stakeholder. So I would say the macro level, you can probably go through that once or twice, and that should be sufficient. Whereas the mini cycle, you want to go through that as many times as you can. If you are a beginner in this field, you want to get your hands dirty and that sort of thing. If your experience level, you're a product manager or you're client facing, I would say you probably want to focus on the macro level. So with that being said, hopefully that sheds some light about how you should design your experiment and think about the pipeline. Next, we have milestone three to actually conduct this experiment. Uh, this means you want to define the ML problem or the AI problem, and you want to actually write the algorithm. And in the end, obviously, the highlight is to write the code. You want to write clean code. You want to write a code that can get you through backtest and potentially provide some sort of software. Based on my experience, most of my students can pass two, three, four fairly easily if number one is well-defined. If number one is not very well-defined, then what I would say is go back to milestone two and to redefine what that problem is. Sometimes a question can be interesting from humanity perspective, but it may not be a machine learning problem. And something like that should come back to milestone two before you execute the steps in milestone three. Once you finish your experiment and you have your results, I will say you're ready to produce the paper. And that takes you to milestone four. There are four pillars to produce an academic paper. The first one is you want to have a good central idea. The central idea needs to be a good sell, and it is your job to sell your idea. And to do that, you need to come up with some sort of logical framework. The paper needs to have very well-defined graphical illustration of what the logical framework means. Maybe it's a system design architect. Maybe it's a nice tabular presentation of what is it that you are trying to show people or convey to people, things like that. And then, of course, you want to present your results. Because you run through the Python code, you've done all your experiments, you've done all the hard work from previous milestone, you want to present that. And you want to present that in a nice tabular form so that reader can digest easily what the message that you're trying to convey. Last but not least, you want to format your paper professionally. 
So whatever style you're going for, right? APA, Chicago, things like that. There are other packages out there to help you format your paper, such as Overleaf website, Latex, things like that. So overall, I will say when you write your academic paper, you want to keep these four things in mind. And if you look at your paper and you know exactly what these four things are, I will say you have a pretty good understanding of what an academic paper is. Last but not least is the publication. Uh, as the last milestone, I will say uh, this is also probably the hardest milestone because it involves peer review. So when it comes to publication, there are four steps. First, you want to select your journal. Are you going for high school journal or are you going for college journal or competitive journal? Things like that. And each of them have different level of difficulties. And that's dependent on the nature of your research, as well as how you communicate with your mentor. Number two is to actually submit your journal. Maybe sometimes the editors ask for a latex package. Maybe it asks for something else. It could be a Word document, things like that. Third is to debate with the reviewers. So this is what we call the peer review. For high school journals, maybe that step is a little bit less defined. But for academic journal, this is, of course, required. And it really requires you to have a well-rounded understanding of your own paper, of your own work, as well as the assumptions that you've been making in your paper. And if you can get past step three, I will say uh, you should be pretty good for publication. And sometimes papers or journals might ask you for this thing called the article processing charge, APC. And that's something trivial to just notice about in case that you need funding opportunities for your research. In a professional setup, almost all research paper has some sort of funding requirements, and that's a required item to go into publication, or you have to supply that fee yourself. As an alternative, I've also seen people do this as another option for number five, which is a book publication or some sort of a chapter publication inside of a book. Also, this could be a book chapter that's going inside of a natural language processing book or a book about a broad topic. And you are really submitting for one chapter. You're not writing the entire book. If this is something that you're going for, you need to make sure that the book is something that people like to read. And that's something that you want to read about yourself and that you can take it to go as part of your own personal portfolio. And once you nail that down, you can submit your paper just as a chapter. I've seen this happen before. There have been some success in this direction. And then in the end, your paper will become a chapter of a book and that book gets released and people can acquire it from Amazon or whatever site that we're looking at. So this is just another option for you to be aware of. So with that being said, now that you understand step-by-step -step breakdown of each and every one of the milestones, now, last but not least, let's talk about the development and database management. When it comes to development and database management, we are really talking about three things. First is this thing on the bottom left corner. It's about data and model storage. The data and model storage is extremely important because you want to have a clear directory of where your code lives and where your data lives. And the code and data comes back up to support your development environment. And typically, a good example to give is Google Colab. Google Colab is a very convenient IDE that allows you to develop your Python programming, whereas all the data set lives directly in your Google Drive. So that's just a good example to help you understand what's going on when we talk about development and data model storage. So that's from the bottom left to the top corner. And then when it goes into production and finished projects, we also recommend you to save your code and your project on GitHub repository, which goes to this icon on the bottom right corner. And the reason that's the case is because sometimes people want to develop some sort of front-end application. Sometimes people want to build a software package that can release online. Some sort of GitHub repository is a place that you want to do that. That allows you to showcase what is it that you've done from a technical perspective and eventually allow you to stand up some sort of API, things like that, so that front-end user can use your product. Before I finish, I just want to show you guys the career trajectory, comparing industry as well as academic. 
Uh, so you have both milestones, one for industry and one for academic, starting from undergrad and how you lead to AI ML data science, where you eventually become a professor. And this is a highlight of what each step might look like. In this presentation, I want to focus on the research program. So I'm going to leave this online and for you guys to take a look at it. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, please feel free to drop a comment and I will try my best to answer all of them. So hopefully this video sheds some light of how to conduct an independent research project. And as you can see from the presentation, it's not so much of a one size fit all. It's really a repetitive process and every step you're making incremental progress. And if you continuously making that progress every step of the way, in the end of summer or your school year, you'll be able to see significant amount of progress that you made. On top of that, I just want to say the research interests come from your passion and your passion come from your knowledge of the real world and your experience of each domain definitely plays a huge factor of producing high impact research paper. And although this video laid out some building blocks for you to master, there really isn't any secret sauce or holy grail to get you past a peer review. Certainly luck plays another factor that we cannot quantify. However, that being said, if you did every step laid out in the presentation of the video, I would say that you should have high confidence to be able to produce that research paper, put on archive, or potentially get you past the peer review to become published. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the program.